Chapter 12 All three of us gaped in horror at the open window, but no creature jumped in. As I stared, frozen in the center of the cabin, I could see only darkness and a fringe of pale stars. Outside in the trees, crickets started up a shrill clatter. There was no other sound. Poor Jay was so frightened and upset, he was seeing things. Somehow Colin and I got him a little calmed down. We made him take off his sneakers and lie down on his bed, and we covered him up with three blankets to help him stop trembling. Colin and I wanted to run for help, but we were too frightened to go outside. The three of us were up all night. Larry never showed up. Except for the crickets and the brush of the wind through the trees, the camp was silent. I think I must have finally dozed off just before dawn. I had strange nightmares about fires and people trying to run away. I was awakened by Colin shaking me hard. Breakfast, he said hoarsely. Hurry, we're late. I sat up groggily. Where's Larry? He never showed, Colin replied, motioning to Larry's unused bunk. We got to find him. We got to tell him what happened, Jay cried, hurrying to the cabin door with the sneakers untied. Colin and I stumbled after him, both of us only half awake. It was a cool, gray morning. The sun was trying hard to poke through high white clouds. The three of us stopped halfway up the hill to the mess hall. Reluctantly, our eyes searched the ground around for the cabin bunk. I don't know what I expected to see, but there was no sign of Roger. No sign of any struggle. No dry blood on the ground. The tall grass wasn't bent or matted down. Weird, I heard Jay mutter, shaking his head. That's weird. I tugged his arm that came moving, and we heard the rest of the way up to the lodge. The mess hall was as noisy as ever. Kids were laughing and shouting to each other. It all seemed perfectly normal. I guess that no one had made an announcement about Roger yet. Some kids called to Colin and me, but we ignored them and searched for Roger, moving quickly through the aisles between the tables. No sign of him. I had a heavy, queasy feeling in my stomach as we hurried to the council's table in the corner. Larry glanced up from a big plate of scrambled eggs and bacon as the three of us advanced on him. What happened to Roger? Is he okay? We were worried last night. Roger and I were attacked. We were afraid to go find you. All three of us bombarded Larry at once. His face was filled with confusion, and he raised both hands to silence us. Whoa, he said. Take a breath, guys. What are you talking about? About Roger, Jay screamed, his face turning bright red. The creature, it jumped on him, and... And Larry glanced at the other counselors on the table, who looked as confused as he did. Creature? What creature? Larry demanded. It attacked Roger, Jay screamed. It was coming after me, and... Larry stared up at Jay. Someone was attacked? I don't think so, Jay. He turned to the counselor next to him, a pudgy boy named Derek. Did you hear anything in your area? Derek shook his head. Isn't Roger in your group? Larry asked Derek. Derek shook his head. Not in my group. But Roger, Jay insisted. We didn't get any report about any attack, Larry said, interrupting. If a camper was attacked by a bear or something, we'd hear about it. And we'd hear the noise, Derek offered. You know, screams or something. I heard screams, I told them. We both heard screams, Colin added quickly. And Jay came running back, crying for help. But why didn't anyone else hear it, Larry demanded, turning his gaze on Jay. His expression changed. Where did this happen? When? He asked suspiciously. Jay's face darkened to a deeper red. After the lights out, he admitted. Roger and I went up to the forbidden bunk and... Are you sure it wasn't a bear? Derek interrupted. Some bears were spotted down river yesterday afternoon. It was a creature! Jay screamed angrily. You shouldn't have been out, Larry said, shaking his head. Why won't you listen to me? Jay screamed. Roger was attacked. This big thing jumped on him and... We would have heard something. Derek said calmly, glancing at Larry. Yeah, Larry agreed. The counselors were all here up here in the lodge. We would have heard any screams. But Larry, you've got to check it out, I cried. Jay isn't making it up. It really happened. Okay, okay, Larry replied, raising his hands as if surrendering. I'll go out to Uncle Al about it, okay? Hurry, Jay insisted. Please. I'll go to Uncle Al after breakfast, Larry said, turned back to his eggs and bacon. I see you guys at morning swim week. Later, I will report what Uncle Al says. But Larry, Jay pleaded. I'll ask Uncle Al, Larry said firmly. If anything happened last night, he'll know about it. He raised a strip of bacon to his mouth and chewed on it. 
I think you just had a big nightmare or something, he continued, eyeing Jay suspiciously. But I want you to know what Uncle Al says. It wasn't a nightmare, Jay cried surely. We returned his back on us and continued eating his breakfast. Don't you care? Jay screamed at him. Don't you care what happens to us? I saw that a lot of kids had stopped eating their breakfast to gawk at us. I pulled Jay away and tried to get him to go on our table. But he insisted on searching the entire mess all again. I know Roger isn't here, he insisted. He... He can't be. For the second time, the three of us made our way up and down the aisles between the tables, studying every face. One thing was for sure, Roger was nowhere to be seen. The sun burned through the high clouds just as we reached the water front for morning swim. The air was still cool. The thick, leafy shrubs along the riverbank glistened wetly in the white glare of sunlight. I dropped my towel under a bush and turned to the gently flowing green water. I'll bet it's cold this morning, I said to Colin, who was retying the string on his swim trunks. I just want to go back to the bunk and go to sleep, Colin said, plucking at a knot. He wasn't seeing double any longer, but he was tired from being up all night. Several guys were already wading into the river. They were complaining about the cold water, splashing each other, shoving each other forward. Where's Larry? Jay demanded breathlessly, pushing his way through a clump of shrubs to get to us. His red hair was a mess. Half of it standing straight up on the side of his head. His eyes were red rimmed and bloodshot. Where's Larry? He promised he'd be here, Jay said, frantically searching the waterfront. Here I am. The three of us spun around as Larry appeared from the bush behind us. He was wearing baggy green Camp Night Moon swim trunks. Well, Jay demanded, what did Uncle Al say about Roger? Larry's expression was serious. His eyes locked on Jay's. Uncle Al and I went all around the forbidden bunk. He told Jay. There wasn't any attack there. There couldn't have been. But it... It got Roger! Jay cried surely. It slashed him! I saw it! Larry shook his head, his eyes still burning into Jay's. That's the other thing, he said softly. Uncle I went up to the office and checked the records, Jay. And there is no camper here to see her named Roger. Not a first name or a middle name. No Roger. No Roger at all. Chapter 13, next time, peeps. Take care and be safe.